Hello and welcome to the Alchemy Academy, Episode 2. Today we're going to be discussing the extraction of salt from materials. And the process is required. Maybe we'll discuss some of the equipment and some of the philosophy behind um, the extraction of what is called the salt of salt. Now, one of the main uses for this salt is its use as one of the materials for the making of herbal spagyrics. And um, I assumed that that was one of the only purposes for it. But just recently, I was reading a book by Robert Allen Barlett. And in it, it describes how to make one of the lesser stones, the vegetable stone. And it's one of the three um, materials used for making that stone. And that's definitely something that um, I would like to uh, discuss, not today, but later. Our first step in the extraction of the salt is calcination. Now, what is calcination? Well, calcination is the burning of a material using the fourth degree of fire, or also called balneum ignis. Um, in a nutshell, you get your dried plant material and you burn it um, in a vessel um, over an open fire. Now, um, I've seen people just set the material itself on fire and then go from there. I like to put mine in a metal container, um, like a pad, like a pot or a pan, and put it in over, put it over an open fire. And uh, if the fire is hot enough, the material will combust. Um, by doing this, you're driving off the impurities, the carbons, etc., and you you get ashes. Now you continue to heat these ashes for an extended period of time. You might have to um, uh, break them down even further until they become white. Now, this could take anywhere from a few minutes to several hours because you want the whiter the ash becomes, the more of the impurities that you've driven off. And uh, this is um, a cleansing of the material, a driving off of impurities through fire. And... Uh, it, it, one of the things it teaches as well is, is patience because this is definitely a, uh, a long procedure, you know, if done correctly. Our next procedure that we'll be using is <clears throat> dissolution. Now, this is done by getting your ash material and mixing it with about a 10 to 1 ratio with distilled water. Um, I guess you can use tap water. Just bear in mind that tap water does have impurities in it. So that will affect your end result if you choose to use that. Um, now you put this in a vessel and you agitate it. Then allow it to settle. You, you extract your water from that and collect your leftover ash material that has settled. And you repeat this process a number of times. I like to do it three times. There's no particular reason why I do it that many, but that's some, how many times I have chosen to do it. And it's yielded fairly good results. Um, and you, and after your final extraction, uh, you get that leftover plant, uh, ash material and you discard it. We're no longer going to need this. This is the kaput modem. This is uh, trash. Now what's going on here when we're doing the dissolution process is that we are <clears throat> leaching the water-soluble salts from the ashes themselves. And what we're left with is the non-water soluble material. Our final step in this uh, process is uh, recrystallization of the salts. Now this is done by putting your menstruum, your liquid, in a vessel and applying a gentle flame to the vessel. Um, if your fire is too hot, too vigorous, you will lose some of your salt um, in the evaporation process, so we need to make sure that we keep the flame high enough for evaporation, but not so high that it causes like a rolling ro rolling boil. And what will happen is your water will slowly recede, and what will be left behind is your salt. This is what you want. Um, your salt will be very hard. And you'll probably have to process it to make it finer. Um, what I've noticed from this is that very seldom, 
it's never happened to me, but I'm sure it can happen, is that your salt will still have a lot of impurities in it. You can tell by the color. It will usually be brownish or grayish still. Now, after this, if you want a higher level of purity of your salt, you can repeat the dissolution and the recrystallization. This, um, this part of the process is very time-consuming. Um, depending on how much liquid you have, it could take hours, days even, depending on, um, like I said, how much uh, volume you have of liquid. But it's, it's definitely worth it. You know, as Stephen School once said, alchemy is about patience, not about instant gratification. And, uh, of course, I'm paraphrasing, but that's something I definitely agree with. Um, it's, it's definitely, it definitely teaches patience. It definitely teaches uh, contemplation because while you do these processes, you have time to think about what you're doing instead of just wham, bam, doing it. In which case, you don't have time for that, um, that quiet and that contemplation. The extraction of salt <clears throat> from plant material, um, I go quite a ways with it. It was the first ever experiment that I conducted in my early days into the study of alchemy. And I must have tried it probably a good dozen times um, and failed. Um, at first, I wasn't using enough plant material. And then when I increased the volume of my initial material, I would get impatient with the recrystallization process, which, as I mentioned before, is very time-consuming. And I would um, apply too much heat, and I would lose all my salt to evaporation. And um, finally, after you know a few years of you know a, about a dozen attempts. Um, I finally was able to achieve it, and um, I learned that lesson, and, I, and when it comes to alchemy, uh, the knowledge gained from experimentation is just as important, if not more important, than your material itself, your end result, and uh, that's one of the cool things about alchemy, is that it's not just about physical it's also philosophical. It's also about not you know the ultimate uh, goal in alchemy was uh, uh, the search for knowledge. This has been episode two of the Alchemy Academy. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what um, we'll be discussing in episode three. I haven't decided yet, but um, I guess we'll find out. Um, thank you for listening.